So I, I just want everybody to know that it's, you know, it, it's been tricky over the last couple of months trying to figure out Sunday services, uh, trying to be a bit creative with that. And uh, I want you to actually tune in Sunday at 10. Uh, we're going to do something pretty, uh, a little bit different for Memorial Day weekend. So uh, I'm just going to kind of plant the seed for that. But boy, you know, trying to keep people connected, making sure ministry and outreach keep happening. And you know what? I think we've been doing an, an incredible job. We have a great team here and all of you at home and with kids and, and all the stuff we've been doing uh, of outreach and checking in on people and making sure, man, I guess going to talk tell you that uh, I think we've been doing a, an incredible job. So I'm very proud of us as a church. But now we're talking about the next phase. In fact, I had this all planned out even before I listened today to what was going on with the, what our governor was talking about. So, and it, and it doesn't really change anything. It, it's, uh, we're talking about what is the next phase for us as a church? What does it look like for us to begin re-entry into this building? And and saying that this is perhaps the trickiest thing yet, I think, is putting it mildly. So uh, I'm reading an article called Church, Don't Let Coronavirus Divide You. Don't let corona, uh, the coronavirus divide you as a church. And I'm just going to read for you. I take some cues from this, but I just want to read for you the first paragraph. Okay. It says this, as if the logistical details weren't challenging enough, how to maintain social distance and limit crowd size, whether or not to require masks, to sing or not to sing, what to do with children and so on. This whole conversation about what it means to, to kind of re-enter a building is fraught with potential for division. If a congregation and within it, a leadership team is at all a microcosm of our larger society, it will likely contain a broad assortment of strongly held convictions. And, and I think that's pretty much true of our church. Some will be eager to meet in person and impatient to wait much longer for things to get back to normal. Others will insist it's unwise to meet until there's a vaccine. And most people will fall someplace in between those, those, two, uh, those two perspectives. So, you know what? I, I thought it was just really important for us to begin communicating expectations so that we can begin to understand what it actually means for us as a church. And by us, at this point, I'm, I'm specifically talking about North Baptist Church, what this means for us in this next phase. Uh, so we've already had people saying that the governor said churches can begin reopening on the 31st so we can come back then. And that was before today. So let me explain this. Um, I, I was listening to the news today and, and learned that Bishop Tobin and the, and the Catholic Diocese had already been in talks with leadership, governor and stuff. And so they're planning on opening up on Pentecost weekend, which would be the 30th, 31st uh, for services. And then I was listening to a talk show where somebody representative of, of the diocese was explaining uh, how they would do that. and. That was very encouraging because everything they're talking about are the things we're already we have already talked about about what it would mean to come back into this building. And then I listened to the governor, and she is saying that in fact churches can begin meeting again on May 30, 30th, or 31st, whatever that date was, uh, that Sunday, uh, for for services. However, all of these stipulations there uh, were going to apply. Um, six foot rule, um, wearing masks, that uh, the, the figure that they're using, and, and it's actually, a, it, we didn't use this figure, but it plays out exactly with the way we were thinking, you know, and you would only be able to use 25, the 25% rule, uh, whatever your capacity is, you, you're limited to 25% of that. Um, so I, I was listening to this, but the, the bigger thing here is we were assuming that that would happen in her phase three, which is still a little ways away, not, in, not a week from Sunday. Um, so that kind of changes uh, the timeline of when this is happening, but it doesn't change any of the expectations and it doesn't change the plans that we've put in place. So I got to tell you, our worship 
uh, folks of property management. We have actually been meeting and we have a we, and we already had a preliminary discussion with our board about what it looks for us, what it looks like for us to reopen. So here's the thing. Our utmost goal is to begin to let people back as safely as possible. That's the goal. And my prayer is that we can all do that and maintain Christian unity. So uh, even today, even, even today, I'm reading about two different churches, not in Rhode Island, but two different churches who rushed to come back. And they were lax on the safety protocols, and now they regret it. There were people that were tested positive, and guess what? The churches are closed again because they, they didn't take the proper precautions, right? That's not going to be us. Our promise is that on this first phase of coming back, and remember, this is just the first phase. It won't last forever, but we're going to start by doing everything possible to keep you safe. And that might be harder for some of you than it is actually staying home and watching us on Facebook Live on Sunday mornings. Because coming back, this first phase, I'll be honest with you, coming back is going to be more about what you can't do than what you can do. And we don't like being told what we can't do. You know, that, that there's something in us that, that, that kind of wants to rebel against that. But that's kind of what it's going to have to look like. So here's the thing. We see so much selfishness and self-centeredness in our society already. Perhaps now is the perfect time for the church to model love. And it places the interests of others above ourselves. So there's a verse of scripture that I want us all to meditate on, perhaps even memorize. It's not that hard. And definitely live out when it, when it comes to coming back together again, this first phase of coming back together. It's from Philippians 2, verse 3. It says this, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Let me read that again. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. That's a Christian perspective. That's a, that's a Jesus perspective. Okay? For example, someone might find it personally difficult, even maddening, to have to wear a mask during church and stay six feet away from everybody at all times. You, you might think these precautions are a needless overreaction, but here's the thing. Even if it turns out that you're right, can you not sacrifice your ideal for a season out of love for others who believe the precautions are necessary? Even if you personally think it's silly or even cowardly for someone to stay home, even after the church is open again, can you not heed Paul's wisdom in Romans 14, 3? Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in the way of a brother or sister. It's about the other person. And likewise, those of you who think the lockdown should continue and not pass judgment on the wisdom of the government's ongoing restrictions, you know, churches should strive to honor people on both sides of the spectrum. And yeah, it's going to be costly for churches to keep offering online services for those who don't feel comfortable attending physical gatherings. It will be a, a sacrifice for church members who are sick of masks and social distancing and Zoom and to continue to use these for the sake of others. But there's hardly a more Christian response than a posture of sacrifice, right? So we should embrace it with love. None of us, none of us should assume we've arrived at the definitive answer on how to do this well. So let's model humility by acknowledging that everything is not obvious. And we are all just trying to do the best that we can. I love the way Brett McCracken described it in this article. It says it was what we're doing is like it's like trying to build an airplane in midair. 
you know, you're falling and you're trying to build the airplane, right? In in, in midair, it's that's that's how crazy it is. It feels at times. Um, the other thing is, is as I really want to to call us to truly seek out the fruit of the spirit, particularly as it pertains to patience. Because listen, here's the other thing: just because we may be allowed to begin coming back, that's not the same thing as being ready to have people come back. For instance, just because there's a date, and now I'm just finding out this week, it's a week from Sunday, right? That doesn't mean that we can get the cleaning supplies needed to disinfect by that date. And, and trust me, I, I, I want us to be back together just as much, if not more than you do. And that day will come. But we are going to be careful not to rush it for the sake of coming back. We're not, we're not going to we're not going to go faster than the government allows, or faster than doing it well and safety requires. So please be patient, not with the governor's timeline, but with our timeline, because it's going to it's not going to be a week from Sunday. I can guarantee that we we weren't prepared. We weren't thinking it was that quick. We were thinking it's probably not till July. Um, and be patient with a reopening process that will doubtless be clunky, patient with those of us feeling the pressure of a complex situation, patience with one another as we figure out this first step. Those who are not comfortable with physical gatherings should be patient with those who are and vice versa. As hard as it will be to practice patience, remember that in the scheme of, of eternity, this season is just a blip. So at this point, I, I think it would be helpful. Don't don't think about what we were doing three months ago. Don't move from our uh, don't move from our idea of what was normal backwards to this. Rather, see this as moving from total streaming of services and not being allowed in the building to the next step moving forward. And if the results of the survey we sent out are any indication, some of you will come back right away and some of you will not. And it's all for good reasons. So let me tell you what we're thinking. Right now, we're assuming, like the governor said today, we're assuming masks and social distancing. That means it doesn't matter how many the governor says we can meet. We're limited by space. And she said it today, it'll be 25%. So. In phase three, we were waiting until there was like, she was moving to 50 gathering and we couldn't fit 50 safely in our sanctuary. So we won't have 50. 25% is about 25 people in terms of what we've measured already. We've ordered some touchless hand sanitizer stations a few weeks ago. They're not even shipping into the first week of June. We've got extra masks. They're not shipping to the first week in June. We believe we've got a good solution to, to clean and disinfect the pews, but we've got a couple of questions still hanging and not getting back to us yet, but we believe we've got a good solution in that. And our, our sanctuary is a bit more difficult because our pews have padded seats, fabric, uh, and, and that changes it a little bit. We're thinking of a variety of solutions, like since we're coming to warmer weather, we may have some services outside. Uh, we're looking at having more services with smaller number of people to start with. So maybe a couple on Sunday morning, but also possibly doing one during a midweek evening. Uh, we're, we're, we're working through all of those things. We're, we're going to get there, folks, one step at a time. But we're going to be smart and we're going to be careful about it. Why? Frankly, because we care about you and we care about those that are most vulnerable in our church, especially. We, so please care about others before yourself. It's not just about the people that you will be here with either. It's about the people that others that they go home to who may be a part of that vulnerable population. So there you have it. I, I know the governor says a week from Sunday, we're not ready for that. I'm just telling you that up front. There's not a chance that that's gonna happen. But we have, you know, just even today had the discussions of saying, all right, but she's moved up that timeline. We're not waiting. We weren't anyway, but um, we're gonna be ready. We're, as soon as we're able to do this safely, we're gonna do it. Everything's in motion. Everything's being put together. We have thought through 
almost any possible scenario you can think of. So having said that, I know some of you have great intentions and it comes from the hearts that care, but please, can I just, I gotta ask you a favor. I, I almost hesitate to do this, but having heard only some of what we're planning, I didn't go through everything, please resist the temptation to respond with all of your ideas. I know that sounds so bad on my part. It really does, I get that. But that's actually just gonna create more work for us because now we're gonna have to respond to everybody and go, yeah, we probably, th you know, we, we thought of that, we thought of that, or no, nope, we're already here. We can't go back again. We're not gonna go backwards. That's gonna take more time. Um, we, we, are, we have an overwhelming number of wonderful resources that are already come our way. Every day we get these ideas and suggestions. We're taking our cues from our denominational resources. We're taking our cues from the CDC and the governor we, 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 and, and others. And we, we pretty much know exactly right now what this first step needs to look like and what we need to do. And we're already underway in getting us there. We just didn't think it was going to happen this quickly or need to happen this quickly. So next phase for us, three things. Consider others more important than yourself. Secondly, please be patient. Thirdly, continue to be the church right where you are, even as you've been doing, okay? Keep doing a great job for the sake of the kingdom of God. And, and, and I guess I'm gonna add a fourth one and just pray for us. We are, we are managing this. We are doing uh, more than the best we can. I, I think we're doing an incredible, we're having incredible discussions and very important discussions about what this will look like. We're, and we will get there as soon as we know it's safe for us to do that. As soon as that can happen, then you'll be, you'll be seeing what it takes and, and how we're gonna do all of that, all right? So thanks folks, good with being with you tonight. I'm five minutes over already from what I said our Bible study was gonna be on, on Sunday. So I'm gonna have to go um, and we'll talk to you soon. And again, just a teaser, come on on Sunday at 10 o'clock for worship. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different than what we've been doing in the last few weeks. Just, uh, again, plant that seed. So God bless. Have a great night. See you, folks.